Good morning, my friends and family. Jill here with North Texas Vegetable Gardening, canning recipes, a little bit of everything. And the high tunnel out here before it gets sultry, sultry hot. You can see we have an abundance of these bumblebees and they are really helping us out, guys, with our cucumbers and our melons, um, even the tomatoes. And my beautiful squash is coming up, but I'm not seeing any flowers yet. I'm seeing some ladybugs over there. So I'm not seeing any flowers yet. I'm hoping to start seeing those this week so we can start harvesting some squash. So at the beginning of the video, you saw some of our seed starts. Um, we have the golden acre cabbage. I choose the golden acre because it has smaller heads and it's a quicker um, harvest time. It's not as long as the Brunswick cabbage. We have corn. Greg's gonna try some corn. So, um, don't know if you guys know that, but you can, you can go ahead and plant for a fall corn harvest. And uh, we're sure gonna give that a try. We're also gonna put some purple hull peas in the ground. And we're gonna, um, ooh, I got some pretty zucchini in there, guys. I'm gonna have to get in here. That's beautiful, a couple of them. Um, let's see, gonna put some purple hull peas in the ground gonna put some onions gonna go ahead and do my onions um, this weekend and somebody had asked me about the sweet meat melon they weren't they had never heard of it so this is what it is it is a sweet meat winter squash these guys get to be about 15 pounds we're gonna go ahead and try some of these Greg's got pumpkins started um, let's see cauliflower we're going to start some broccoli again we're going to continue to wait on our greens because um it's just simply too hot right now for lettuces and spinach but those will be coming in soon we've not gotten any rain we do have a 40 percent chance today so i'm hoping that we go ahead and get that guys pray that we get that rain um we got a slight breeze kind of coming well it's from the south you saw the cracks in the ground guys we are dry 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 and anything that we don't even attempt to water um, looks terrible and we are completely dry I got lots of zucchini I got to get in there and get that zucchini let me show you these plants so squash and zucchini just love this high tunnel environment you can see there there's a couple down in there oh yeah some beautiful some back there yeah, we gotta get this. So yeah, we're still very hot and dry. They're telling us next week that we're gonna be in triple digits again. Lord, we are praying, praying, praying for rain and cooler temps to come. We still got August to get through, guys. And we're really praying that this weather pattern changes. Now, we do see some hope. Um, I was reading from uh, one of the weather places down in Austin was saying that they do see that the La Nina pattern uh, may be breaking up and they think that by the end of this year, it'll be gone. And that will put us back into a regular weather pattern for us here in Texas, at least. So La Nina is uh, indicative of this dry, hot weather. It's also indicative of um, the, the ice storms that we get late January and February. So if La Nina goes away, uh, then hopefully, guys, we will have a normal spring and a normal summer next year. And I'm, I'm hoping that it gets out of here like really, really quick. So Greg's doing some summer cleanup. This is one of the raised beds that we had some of our squash and zucchini in. And he is preparing this ground in front of the small high tunnel. And he's gonna plant, aren't you gonna plant pumpkins? Yeah, I'll take some pumpkins and squash and I don't know, some other stuff, we'll see. Pumpkins and winter squash. Yeah, we're going to plant some acorn squash, guys, because my pop likes the winter squash, so we'll be doing that. So this area here was traditionally our conventional garden, and uh, it's kind of, since we put this high tunnel up last year or year before, um, we've not used this soil, and so it's got some good mix into it. And um, this is where we put a lot of our compost and a lot of our mushroom soil. So we're really hoping to get a good return on this right here. I'm a little more hopeful for our sweet potatoes. 
than I was earlier. Um, I was really afraid that the heat was gonna get them, but they do seem to be starting to prosper um, a little bit better. Thank the Lord for that. See that? That's Greg's spotlights or floodlights um, that he's using when he comes out in the early morning hours. Guys, he just, after 10.30 or 11 o'clock, he just can't get out here. It's just too dead gum hot. So uh, he has been turning these on and coming out here and working in the early morning hours and this helps him when it's dark. We've not had a lot of luck with peppers, but you can see some of them back there in the uh, north east corner are doing pretty good. And um, so I'm hoping that they'll start to prosper here in the next month or so, because those peppers will keep going to the first freeze guys. And we tried to overwinter last year and I was not successful. I'm not gonna try to do that again. It's just easier to go ahead and start new plants. I'm, I, I left the peppers in the ground and tried to keep them um, protected and we even had some growing under a grow light but once we brought them outside and tried to get them acclimated it didn't really work out well for us so we'll go ahead and do those by seed again um, in the spring he's just going to work isn't he now guys we've had bumblebees in the past but I've never seen them like this and uh we have seen them concentrated on one of the crepe myrtles, and believe it or not, our crepe myrtles used to be infested with aphids, but Greg has gotten that problem, we think, um, corrected, and we will surely see um, probably the next season to make sure, uh, especially when I start planting my greens, like my bok choys and my lettuces, because aphids loved, they love that bok choy. So we'll see if we got the aphids under control whenever we get those in the ground. But uh, the last couple of years we've had uh, practically no pollinator. So we are so pleased and uh, pleasantly surprised that we have all these bumblebees and they are just so busy in all of those flowers in there and they are pollinating everything in this high tunnel. So if you've been following us any length of time, you know that this is our first year in the big high tunnel. Uh, we did a season, we did I think maybe two seasons in the little high tunnel, but this is our first year in the big high tunnel just to see uh, what we could grow, what we could do. So we fully expect to have this thing completely filled uh, next year. We wanted to do it this year, but um, you know, we had some health issues and so many things just going on, trying to uh, get our family situated. And so this coming fall and this coming spring, we plan to load this high tunnel up. Now we do have to plant in the ground in this high tunnel because the USDA did come out and they assisted us. Uh, with the purchase of this high tunnel. So we do have to plant things in the ground. Now the other high tunnel up front um, is, is our investment. Now this was mainly our investment. The USDA does help. It's not, it's not the, um, the full amount. They don't help you with the full amount, but they do help you with a certain amount per square foot. And the smaller one uh, we did, that's, that was our own private investment. So that's why you see raised beds or right, tubs and raised beds in there because we can do that in there. We're finding though that we're doing pretty good in the soil here, especially with these tomato plants back here. Um, Greg's gonna do some pruning and I'll be doing some pruning and trying to get it cleaned up and boy, does that breeze feel good. Uh, get it cleaned up and we're gonna try to keep them going um, until the fall and hopefully get another harvest. So I ordered some purple hull peas from Bradley Seed Company. I've never heard of them, but uh, this is the ones that I was able to find and get quickly. They are out of Florence, Alabama, which is uh, close to where my brother lives. My brother lives in Muscle Shoals, and they call that, I think, the Tri-Cities or the Quad Cities, which is Muscle Shoals, Florence, Sheffield, and maybe one other, so maybe the Tri-Cities. But anyway, uh, these are the pink-eyed purple hull beans. Guys, it takes about 62 to 90 days for harvest. We are at the end of July, so we have August, September, and October and uh, we'll probably be just fine. We normally don't get our first freeze till sometime in November. I certainly don't expect that to change this year. Um, so we think that we're gonna do just fine with this. So if you're in Texas or South Texas or in some of the Southern states, you may check and see if you can go ahead and get some purple hull peas in the ground. Now these are said to be a prolific variety. Um, they're said that they're only supposed to get about uh, compact about two feet tall but i've read some reviews 
and people say no they get much bigger than two feet tall and they probably do need to be staked but uh, we'll see we shall we shall see but i had some customers here in our area uh, that requested the purple hull peas and we like them too so we're going to go ahead and uh, try to start some of these purple hulls are a little different than black eyed peas they're a little smaller and they're a little less fibrous or grainy so we have a busy couple of days Wanted to check in with you guys, um, tell you thank you for your prayers. The Lord has kept us safe from all the wildfires that are happening literally, guys, all around us. Literally, all around us. And uh, so praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Keep praying. Keep praying for safety. Um, and keep praying for rain. And keep praying for cooler temps. And we will be in touch. I love you all. We will uh, probably chat with you sometime tomorrow. Take care. God bless. See you soon.